Hello. Okay. Hello, everybody. It is Saturday, February 24th. And this is a long overdue art stream. Uh, it's a critique. Um, for those of you uh, that have been following this channel for a while, um, I've done drawing sessions, uh, but I used to do more regular commentaries or critiques of portfolios, por portfolio, uh, portfolio reviews, and um, uh, I kind of stopped because, frankly, I wasn't getting as many submissions to keep up the, the pace, and I think it was probably because the idea was new, and so a lot of you were, were working on um, submissions. And I just checked my mailbox recently and realized I actually had quite a few. So um, the good thing is I will be doing these on a more regular basis. And uh, for those of you who have um, sent in submissions, thank you very much. Uh, it was very kind of you to get on it, I guess. And uh, we've got plenty to um, look at in the future. So look for those. Usually they're Saturday mornings from 10 uh, to 11. Uh, Pacific time. It takes about an hour. And I usually go through one person's work. Today's session, I'm actually going to focus on two different people's work because uh, it's not really about the submission, uh, the story that's presented, or the one particular artist, but it's uh, I, I look at the submissions and I look for topic or subject matter to, to discuss. Uh, and today, I notice in two of these particular um, submissions, uh, a commonality or, or an issue that I wanted to talk about uh, that I felt that um, they shared. So, um, good morning, California here. Good morning, Kirahiko. We got Kirahiko in the house. I'm like looking at my very, very small chat window. I also moved back to my Mac on this one just because uh, that's where the Cintiq is hooked up, so hopefully the stream is not too laggy. Um, what else do we have here? Um, a Crispy, another one of our mods. So I think we've got... Good morning, Kuyamu. Yes, I have your submission. Frankly, sometimes the submissions are... Um, just speaking to no one in general... They're really solid, um, and it's actually difficult for me to critique it. A lot of times, uh, you know, just to be transparent, sometimes the work you get is just, it's all there, but it's not quite refined enough, or it's not quite relaxed enough, or it's not quite um, uh, uh, to the level where you go, well, this person would be hireable. That said, I did get two submissions that I thought were really, really great. Um, so I actually replied to those people and said, look, do you have more? I want to see more. Um, and, uh, you know, but there, there's a certain level that is, I think, difficult for people to realize when they're developing their own work. Uh, I think people are, are, are not able to see how good their submission is relative to others because it's their own work. And that's the hardest part about it, is that it's very easy for uh, an up-and-coming artist or someone who, frankly, doesn't even draw to tell if art is good or bad, but it's off, often hard for them to see it within their own work. Um, anyway. All right. So I think uh, we're going to... So you, you guys can see... Oh, and we have an elephant as well. So we have all three of our mods. Thank you very much for... for Showing up this morning, guys. Um, the whole screen is quite zoomed in. It is. Um, and uh, that's because OBS just did an update. And whenever it updates, it decides that it's going to reconfigure everything for me for because that's a lot of fun to do. So let's, let's try this. Uh, let's... There we go. 
All right. Great. So um, what I'm going to talk about today is that um, it's really about um, the building blocks to anatomy or, or figures and how we often kind of miss a joint or uh, a part of the anatomy that makes figures look as dynamic as possible, as tall as possible. This first work is by uh, 13th Ronin. And um, he sent in multiple submissions, actually, over the months. And uh, most of them were inked. And I picked this one because it wasn't inked. And 13th Ronin, if you're here, um, you know, the inking I saw was relatively flat. It looked like you were, you were using a marker. And um, I felt that the pencils was where you should focus in that the inking, I think sometimes didn't do justice to your pencil. So we're looking at 13th run in pencils here. It looks like a woman interro or a woman and a man interrogating a woman, I believe. And so we have that page. Um, we have this page, which I will now expand. And we have this page here. All right. So, and then we have pages by um, this person here, Ari. I don't know if both of these are here. You know what might be actually useful in the future is I'll put a post up in Discord which portfolios I'm going to review. So I'll probably do another one um, next weekend as well. And then the following weekend I won't be because I'll be uh, at South by Southwest. So uh, if you guys don't know about our Discord page, uh, the mods can refer you to it. It's basically, an, um, it's Discord is it's a platform for gamers to communicate while they play in games, usually in squads or teams or whatever. But it's also a very robust platform where people can go and um, uh, it's like a message board, but it also allows you to have different channels. So it's it's a message board slash website that kind of devoted to this stream. It has uh, all the announcements about future streams. It has schedule information. It has um, an area for, for members to post up art that they've received or they've created, introduce themselves, and that's for people that, that sub. Um, but even if you don't sub, there's a couple of areas where you can um, just, you know, chat. And then also, um, if we do a draw along session, people can kind of actually post their results. For the, for the members, there's also an area where people can um, uh, make suggestions for streams and stuff. And those are pretty useful. Anyway, so uh, this is Ari's work here. And if you kind of flip through, it's, it's this uh, Superman... So I'm going to go in and expand all these here. And I think that's his third pitch. That's right. So, so what I wanted to really kind of focus on with this was um, the areas. Um, hold on. Let me make a different layer so I can kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. second. I want to make sure that this will show up even. second guys um, I 
whenever I um, lower it on the screen, it, it drops off at the bottom. I can I, I see that. Ah, uh, okay. It'll be helpful to have in brush mode here. And oh, great, that is showing up. Perfect, perfect. But it's showing up in great, which is not as perfect. We'll just switch the mode here to color. All right. Fantastic. All right. So what am I talking about? Um, basically, 13th Ronin has done a relatively good job, I think, in um, construction of the figure in that you have like your head shape here. Um, you have your torso here, your pelvis here, and then kind of this... Uh, the stomach, abdomen, and um, what's interesting is that in the previous submission, he kind of left out some of this information here or here, uh, and so he's already made improvements, which I think is a good thing to see in people. Okay, um, and it's actually done a pretty good job in this arm in that. This is actually one of the harder things to do over here is this kind of bent arm thing going on right here. But what I want to focus on was when people cross their arms or when they're striking um, or when you look at the gentleman in the lower right hand corner, you see you got your neck here, your head here, your torso here. And it's important to, to draw underneath. But then I feel like that belly button's there. The pelvis should be lower. And it's a subtle thing. And I feel like the pelvis got moved up because of this panel border down here. He, it's almost like um, uh, they, they have an expression in basketball, like if you, or any sport, when you hear other feet, like it makes you panic and, 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 so if you're a wide receiver and you're about to catch the ball and you hear the footsteps of your defender behind you, it kind of makes you panic and, and kind of pull up a little bit. And it's almost like the panel border down here, as he was drawing down and realized he saw this panel border, it made him go, oh, I got to draw this pelvis. I, you know, I got to draw the rest of this body or I got to, I, I want to draw as much of it as I can. And so he ended up pulling up the body and making it naturally shorter than it was. And so... By all means, you you need to draw through that panel border. You gotta like pretend it doesn't exist, and then if it doesn't crop the way you want, you have to redraw or replace that figure. So everything, all of a sudden, you know, everything on these figures before in the first two panels were I think fairly consistent in terms of proportion. But then all of a sudden, when he got to this figure down here, boom! This arm, his this guy's this guy's arm just got super short, really for no reason. And, and so I think you have to draw through and, you know, it would be down here. And I feel like that feels uncomfortable, right? Where the end of that cuff, that, the amount of space between the end of that cuff where he's got his hand in his pocket and the bottom of that panel. And likewise, if you move this pelvis down to where it should be like that, it, it's a weird crop. And that's probably why he ended up kind of seizing up and pulling it all up. Um, but this, this figure got very... Um, and he's like norm normally proportioned up here, and then as he got went further down towards this panel, everything got shorter and shorter. So I think there's some issues there. Okay, so um, one way of working around that is to try to ignore the panel border and draw through as much as possible, and realize that when you you might be changing your proportions as you get through. Okay, so now we come over here, and. Um, Doing this kind of stuff here, panel two, with that arm folded. Again, because of this panel border, I feel 13th Rona kind of pulled up and didn't want to put it right here because that would have been a bad tangent. But that's really where that elbow should be. And in fact, I will even um, refer you to, to the first panel. Um, where it didn't look like he pulled up as much. So... 
I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw through. Maybe it's just a little bit. See, I mean, and I'm just going to ignore this panel border. And that would allow, that would mean that this port panel border hat would have to move down, right? Okay, so that, that's kind of what you need to do. And then when you get down here with this, um, the distance between these figures is such that you would have to, um, gosh, either foreshorten the arm, the striking arm, or pull that figure in closer. She looks like she's too far back from the person that she's striking. So you can kind of fix that by maybe foreshortening this. Let me see what happens. I don't know if that helps it or not. Okay. And I think that that gets me to um, what I want to talk about today was like arms and the structure of arms. Before we had kind of gone over, well, look, this is a shoulder. Here's a bicep. And what was good is that this artist, 13th Ronin, inserted kind of the extra material there to, to make that to, to make that, that arm work, okay? A lot of people kind of put the, the deltoid, or the uh, shoulder muscle, the bicep muscle, and then they go straight into the forearm, and uh, they're, they're kind of, it just looks a little um, squished, and so it's good to, um, think of um, it's good to think of kind of the interstitial areas in between parts of the body okay so to create a more relaxed figure you have to remember, this is kind of, do the torso. But then you could kind of have gone in like this, I think. Drop that weight a little bit more. So now that this arm is actually doing some of the propping up, and there's more of a sign of physical defeat in this figure a little bit, right? Okay. That's So that's the underdrawing structure that I like to do. And, right, because 13th Ronin really has her sitting very, very upright. And her spine is going like that. And then I assume her, 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 her legs are kind of going here like that. But uh, to get more of a slouch, I feel... Like you would actually even go in. Oops, not, sorry, that's not what we wanted to do. Let's go here. Let's go there. Let's see what happens if we go here. Okay. And then even with, I feel the breasts are a little too bowling ball-ish and kind of inserted um, unnaturally into the torso a bit. So now I'm going to use a tool that's called liquify and just kind of adjust. You can't adjust it too far because it kind of then distorts it too much and you lose some of the structure. Um, but it is a nice tool for... Um, making refinements like this and we'll, we'll use it often um, 
you know, when I get something like Final Inks and I go, oh, kind of need to change a couple of things and you don't want to go in and mess with the actual physical artwork itself. It's nice to, to just get a scan and then tweak it and, and liquefy. But obviously if you do it too much, you get these kind of heavy distortions. So again, you can't do, you can't go too crazy with the, um, the actual changes. But if you stay within a certain level of change, uh, it actually looks pretty good. So I need to... But for this, I'm just kind of breaking down sort of mass shapes or sizes. Okay. And so now we can kind of see before and after, before and after, and how I, you know, never mind like kind of the, the, uh, the, uh, how the lines, <clears throat> like, you know, on the underside of the breasts aren't smooth and, and some of the other lines look very, very disordered. I'm, I'm just thinking more about body mass and, and shapes. And if you look at the two, you can kind of see how I've kind of put the weight on on her left arm that's uh, that's uh, supporting her weight, okay? And that's really kind of um, want to talk about is how when you construct the figure, you can create the illusion of weight and movement and power. And that's really what I think good superhero drawing, good drawing in general, but okay. So to, to talk about the actual structure now underneath all this, you have, you know, the bones, right? The spinal cord, right? You have that. And then you have the muscle masses. Right, with this interstitial here. A joint there, to kind of, right? And then, and then the breast really should duct into here right uh, in fact I would really recommend not even drawing the actual breast until the very very end which mean meaning when I draw a figure like this I'll just go in and do this and then um, really having a costume that's so snug where you can see the underside you know the roundness of, of, of the breast like it's so like it's almost like a bowling ball it's a very 90s kind of way of drawing it so to be more contemporary and modern and, and, and frankly more progressive, I would probably um, not focus so much on the costume being so literally skin like painted on and and show kind of how cloth or material would fold over um, these shapes, right? And then given how long this arm is, now we have to think about what, what happens to that arm when it's foreshortened over there. Well, it's going to be about the same length here. And then it's going to come forward. And as it comes forward, to create the illusion of foreshortening, it's if there were band lines on the arm, when it comes forward, these band lines have to basically, um, basically bend and be rounded like that. All right, so that's what we needed there. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back in and kind of ink what I've kind of liquefied at this point. And then what I would say on something like this, and if you notice in Liquify, I actually brought her chin down more, and uh, I think you could even take that whole head and and then decide, well, what happens if I do this? And that's the great thing about Photoshop, uh, but I don't draw in Photoshop, is that you can take elements, and kind of move them around. So if you moved it over here, just a fraction Um, okay. Is it uh, right? 
Was that a better location or was the previous location better? All right. And uh, I would I would even say that bringing that head down, bring that chin down actually makes it look a little more dynamic. Okay. And so what this shares with this artist, Ari, is there is a scene where, okay. So if we look up here, to this panel, panel one. We're gonna bring this down. You have Superman punching down into the ground. It's the same thing with the, with the female character that was interrogating the other character before, is that you have, hold on, let me, okay, it's, you have an arm that's well drawn, I think, and that you have the um, shoulder, you have the bicep, tricep. I think you can add that connector, just think of a small tube here, and then pull out, and then all it does is, man, it just pulls that forearm just out a little bit more. Gives you a little bit more length. And then a ball here in the wrist, and that gives you a little more length here. And now all of a sudden, arm still looks good. Doesn't look too elongated, but now there are these uh, areas here and here, here and here that just give a little more length. And technically, there should be one right here as well. So, okay. But now, I feel like he's just kind of, almost like he's swatting down against like a roach or something. Um, to create as much power in this figure as possible, you have to line up the masses behind it. And what I mean by that is, um, if you watch any athlete, and there's plenty now with the Olympics, but you know, you think of golfers or baseball players, and you see them when they strike the ball. This is a bit of a tangent, but I need a new board for this. Okay, and I'll go back to that Superman in a second. Is when you see a baseball player, it's it's not just the arms that's making contact, or you know. Uh, all right, here's the bat, and here's the ball. Okay, so the ball's coming down here. Or maybe it's a golfer, I don't know. Uh, so it's not just the arms that's making the contact, but it's the fact that they're putting their, their hips, it's their hips that they're, that they're putting behind this, this the swing, okay? All right. And so it's almost, think of a locomotive where you have the, the engine and then the cars behind it basically creating that, 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 that force forward, right? To get as much power, yeah, what's up? You want drama juice? So to get as much power going forward against that ball, you want to line up all the masses of the body like there like there are these the the uh, the parts of a train and line them up so that they're providing their power going forward. It's just a matter of physics at this point, right? So if you've got Superman punching down, all right. It, it's not just his arm that's punching down to the ground there, right? Okay, it's... You want to get as much of everything that he's got from... Right? The shoulder, the bicep, the forearm, to the fist. But you want to get the rest of that body up there, the torso. You want that second car in that train... You want that head to be aligned more over the shoulder because that mass is yet another car in that train, right? You don't want it all the way over here, the head, right? All right? See how I'm lining up, lining up all the cars essentially behind this, this fist hitting this ground? And then that other shoulder. Okay. All right. So what I'm doing with all this 
is it's not just about drawing the body and all the um, the parts of the body correctly or anatomically correct. It's but it's now taking those parts and aligning them in ways to, to maximize um, the power that you're trying to get into a drawing. Hey. What's up? Yeah. Hey, Mason. What type of stream are you doing? Oh, I'm doing an art critique right now. Really? All right. So, okay, let's, uh, okay, let me bring this down here. They all say, hey, Mason. Oh, he stepped back out. Okay. Now think about if this head is over here and it's looking downwards, right? Everything is focus on this spot right here. This is the target. Radiates out like this. So this this chin is almost, uh, think about um, if you're shooting a bow and arrow, and I know there's no camera looking at me, but uh, you kind of, you tuck your chin in to your chest there. Um, and aligning the head with the strike gives you the most amount of power, Right, you have this shoulder, and if you can line up that second card in that caboose, so that other shoulder is up here. Right, and then the other parts, you know, whatever the kneecap, the other leg. Okay, and frankly, you don't have to draw all this stuff because as this Superman character punches out, this stuff will kind of radiate up. Okay, so that's kind of how I think about the figure. If I can come up with a phrase, lining up the what? Are, <laughs> what is it? The carriages? What are the things on the train? cars, lining up the cars of the train, you know, okay, and then uh, you can go from here and then just decide to do shadows, right, and say, okay, this is all going into space, this is the kneecap, So everything that's uh, not in the front goes goes back there. All right. The bicep casts a shadow. Tricep casts a shadow. This muscle that crosses over the forearm casts a shadow. And then I then I basically put the uh, the cape in last. Okay. See how that goes. Thank you, Queen City Amusements. You know what? That reminds me. I should catch up on some of this stuff here. We start a little late, and so when we start late, I put the extra time in so we do at least the full hour. 
And actually, as I do more regular uh, art portfolios, I can kind of build on the knowledge and uh, layer some of the discussion so that it's not just different topics that we kind of pick up from where we last left off. But uh, thank you, Kylo Brody, for subscribing. Uh, I hope's last as well. Glueman, Latimer, Doomsday Clock, Graham Baker, Unpredictable, un Unpredictable. Um, all these people have subscribed recently. So thank you very much, guys. Appreciate the support. Okay. So then if we go back to that Superman shot, where was it, right, here, okay, um, all right, you'll see how it's more static because none of the cars are really lined up on top of each other in the train, right? Everything's drawn correctly, I think more or less in terms of body parts, but aligning them in a way to uh, create the most power uh, is, is not quite there. And I would also say that I would have his right knee up and not his left knee, that usually when you strike, if you strike with this arm, um, it's this leg that goes forward and this leg that has to go back, right? So if you, from the side, if someone's punching forward like this, okay, it's usually this same leg that goes back. It's the opposite leg that goes forward. Left, if so, left arm goes forward, right leg goes forward as well. Okay. All right. And then, uh, so if I had to take this figure and do a liquefy on it, let's see if I can do this here. It would be. Same thing I did in that other drawing, right? You move this arm down. And that's your that's the lead. That's the engine, right? Technically. I think the hand's the engine, right? The forearms, the second car, biceps the third. Shoulder. You take that head and you move it over here. Take that shoulder and you move it up. the leg, I'm, I would pull, if I'm going to go with this pose, I would bring that in, and then everything else, you want to bring closer into that, into that line, right, so, I don't know if this liquefied is really helping matters, but it will in a sec once I get this back out. But the purpose is to kind of twist and show you how you want to think about the figure overall, if that makes any sense. All right. So to review again, let's go back to first off if we're drawing arms 
first way to think about it is top section, bottom section, fist. Add in, think of the, the joints there as, as balls. And, you know, you can, you can extend it all the way down. Okay. And now, um, I'm going to take this. And then draw on top of this for a second. All right, so that's your underdrawing. That's your construction. Okay. And then you you layer the muscle. And then in my head, I'm thinking there's three parts to this. And and there's this little joint where the collarbone I think sticks in there. And that's why you get a shadow right here, because this part is the most, it's the largest, it's the most pronounced of the shoulder muscles. If the light source is coming this way. Okay. You can think of like a little, it's like a little igloo, a little door here, right? If you had to. But it's not, so don't do that. But that's kind of how I like to think about it. I mean, if you want to think about vertices, right? That's kind of like right. And then the bicep, okay, goes into that. Right, so it's a muscle that basically looks like this. It the induction points where it connects to the bone or other parts of the body are at the ends. Okay? But they're hidden because this the shoulder muscle goes on top of that, right? Does that make sense? I say it makes sense and I don't hear anything. So I'm looking at chat. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can, yeah, well, you know what, it's not the igloo, uh, I hope's last, really, it's, if you, sometimes when I draw robots or whatever, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and put a joint right there. It's my way of basically saying, that's how I look at that shoulder muscle, right? The, the tricep, there, I guess there's three because there's, Bicep, there must be two. I don't know. Let's say there's three like that. So from the back side, I think it looks like this. This is the elbow. Forearm, wrist. Okay, so... So here's one, two, three. I think that's roughly it, right? Okay. <laughs> Dark wickets. Igloo, induction, got it. Perfect. That's why I have to go. Igloo, induction, boom. Three muscles. Okay, so from the side, this middle part, here's the elbow doesn't quite line up okay so if that elbow if the elbows down here tricep one two three pop in the shadow okay and then when you get to the forearm there's a muscle I don't know the name of it but it basically crosses over from here to here all right and out of that muscle other little muscles come out so It's the biggest here, so the shadow is largest here, the same way the shadow is the largest up here. The, all right, and then out of the shadow come a couple other like little muscles. And this crossover muscle that I just drew allows you to swing the tennis 
<clears throat> like it allows you to swing your arm over and forward, like uh, striking a tennis ball with a tennis racket. All right. Your wrist is here, and then other stuff goes on here. That's the peck over here. So you can see how putting that shadow on the side of the arm really helps cement the three-dimensionality of it and the weight of it. Okay. I hope last the real. Hard part of the arm is the inside, though, not the outside. The inside. What's the inside? You mean the underside of it? Um, so, if you wanted to go back to, you mean if there's a, okay, let's see. So, same thing, top part, bottom part, interstitials, okay, all right, so now if we go in, here's my little igloo, I'm going to draw from the side, here's that little entrance, okay. The induction of the bicep is in this area here, or actually goes into here, I think. So there's that bicep. The tricep, you can kind of see the top part of it here. Maybe you see the bottom part of it, of uh, the other third one over here. The elbow is right there. This is the top part of that crossover connector muscle that comes in. You have your tendons that basically go into the wrist. You have the ball, the wrist at the bottom there, your palm, and he's doing this sort of the Jesus hand splay because I've run out of room. Okay. And then the peck comes out of this area at all, like. All right. Collarbone goes to the top. So, again, I'm going to reach reshape that glue there. The shadows pretty much run along the the side, right? Got it? Rip cage here. And then you can just keep making the, the shadows darker and thicker depending on how much light is coming. All right? It just darkens. You can go, well, that all still looks like an arm, and you keep pushing the, the shadows more and more, and it still works. So it kind of shows you, if you know these structures, how much shadow you can put on them as the light kind of keeps changing, making everything darker and darker. and how everything kind of correspondingly has to get darker across, right? So at this point, it's almost like these muscles then start casting shadows on each other. 
All right, the forearm basically casts a shadow, or the bicep casts a, sh a shadow across the forearm. The forearm casts a shadow across the bottom part of the, the hand. And now, at this point, the head would probably cast a shadow across the chest up here like this. This muscle casts a shadow there. This rib cage starts casting a shadow across the, the abdomen, and then so on and so on and so on. Okay? So it kind of time-lapsed sundial. Okay? All right. For 3D modeling purposes and a drawing general, what's the proper T pose for the front view? Arms stretched out or arms relaxed? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't I don't do 3D modeling, sorry. Um, Kirihiko is a good mod. You have Lucky. Yes, I have three amazing mods, uh, but Kirihiko was the first, and she set the, the bar for the others. We have young Eggier. <laughs> we have young Eggy. <laughs> Eggy. We have young Crispy Egg Roll, the grasshopper. And we have uh, an elephant as well. All right. You guys are talking about working out. Yeah, I'm using my arm as reference. Exactly. I only do runway modeling. Young, <laughs> young Eggy. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. So getting back to the Superman. Okay, what I've noticed with a lot of what he's uh, Ari's doing is that he's not lining up the cars in the train. So even down here, I'm gonna go to this last one here. I would, I would have. Um, Okay, you got the shoulder right here. Ooh, too thick. Let me. Okay. And if this, the head of the train is this fist here. And it's leaving from the station here at 15 miles an hour, heading in a southwest direction. And dark side's head is a train going. 30 miles per hour in a northeast direction. Am I making your head hurt? Sorry. All right. So, I would think you want to line up as much stuff behind this arm going forward. And so, that chest would go here. Minimum. I mean, I, you could even push it further back. But I would say that chest would be here, and then this head would be here. All right. To create as much movement going forward as possible. All right. If you can see that. If you wanted to do something where you saw more of of the front chest like he's got. Just make sure you do your drawing through, because I think that if his neck goes here, all right, all has to line up. And then you want to twist. You know, before we had talked about how to create power by twisting the torso away from the, the pelvis. The pelvis is down here. All right, if the torso is up here like this, you want to take that pelvis and twist it a little bit so that center line goes down the center. Okay. All right. All right. So if we, again, to recap, Um, to create as much power as possible, start with torso, move the pelvis, 
So that the center mass of the torso and the center of the mass of the pelvis are not aligned straight up and down, but are apart. Okay. If you swing with the right arm, the left leg goes forward and the right leg goes back. So we've got that, right? Okay. If this arm goes forward in space, laterally across your chest, if you can think about the right arm going kind of left as it swings in this kind of arc like that, the other parts of the body have to, uh, in, in reaction to that action, move the other way. So the head is going to basically go this way as the arm goes that way. Okay? The same way this back arm will swing back if this left arm goes, or if, sorry, if this right fist goes forward like this, the left arm goes back in space like that. All right, so those are the physics of, of, of the drawing. And then you want to basically um, take all that and, and, and uh, line it up. So um, that's what I do there. The straight up and down figure is cool, you know, but today we're just talking about construction and kind of lining up the parts of the body to create as much action and um, impact as possible. Alright, so just to kind of review some of the things we're talking about. Alright, so if we're trying to get as much, frankly, as more dynamic um, get that kind of, why is it, oh, let me do that, okay, Got... let's add another layer here, I would put that shoulder, tuck that chin into where the shoulder, so when you strike, if you swing your arm, you'll notice uh, if you do this in real life, I'm saying, if you know, you'll notice that your chin, if you're swinging to your right, if you're swinging your right arm left, you will find that your chin is moving in towards your right armpit. And it's a lovely moment for everyone that does that. Okay, so out there, I see you guys all doing this and going, oh, I should have showered after going out last night. All right. Okay. So here's the chin. Put that shoulder close to that chin. Let's see what happens if you do that. Okay. Let's foreshorten that, that hand. Let's have the fingers go up a little bit as it strikes. Basically, as you swing, that when the chin tucks, the top part of the head rotates forward. All right, so the chin goes down. This shoulder aligns with this shoulder. Now I get a little more power going at you. This is a, this is a car in that train. Here's the, t the front of that train. It is swinging this way. So here's the engine, car two, three, four, car five up there with the other shoulder. All right now, now the whole body is rotating. So theoretically, that leg goes back, and he has, you know, he has the left leg going forward, which is where it should be. All right. So if I drop in shadows, you can kind of see how it's progressing, right? And 
then you could even put that other hand right here. Okay. How many times would you redraw something like this? I saw you sketching just start over because you didn't like it. It could be 15, 20 times. It really, there's no count to it. You just keep drawing until it feels right to you. So um, I'm kind of uh, obsessive compulsive that way where if I don't, um, I give myself an unlimited number of tries. I mean, that's why it's pencil, right? Not ink. Okay. So let's go back to what we have here. And let me see if I can adjust it using liquify. Kind of bring it. All right, let's let's move that forward. This is just to kind of show you. It's not going to be anatomically correct, but it's more about getting all the uh, the parts in a row. All right. To exaggerate, to show you conceptually. Oh, what I'm talking about. Okay. So let me do this very quickly. All right. I'm trying to, <laughs> it's very poorly animated, but you can see like the basic things I'm trying to do is to create more thrust and action into all of this, right? Okay, and so Doing the wrong layer. So I'm just kind of drawing through to create, kind of show you what. Thinking would work have worked better, I think, a little bit there. All right, I have to go back to the black here. I'm just really drawing the shadows at this point, I'm not too concerned about detail. So okay, and then to sell the whole thing, uh, like I said before, I, I think the the figures are probably a little too far apart um, in terms of the actual space, and so I think you could probably um, take this. Sorry, let's uh, let's try to undo that. Let's uh, copy T. Let's see what happens. Nothing happens. Great. Perfect. Um, okay. Let's try that again. Go to the right layer. I feel like that figure should be roughly that size. All right. 
Oops. And let's see what happens. Yeah. Roughly that size, I think. Or maybe just physically closer to her. I mean, that was the other way, too. Yeah, so if you just move, moved her over here more. Okay? Anyway, so, <clears throat> so that's an hour in. So we really just kind of talked about, uh, if I ha had to summarize, lining up the the elements of a figure to create the most amount of power. Make sure you have those interstitials in between all your 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 all your joints, like your elbows, your shoulders, your wrists. Um, um, how it's important to to pick a light source and add a little bit of shadow to one side of of the figures uh, to create depth and and form. And then also to make sure that. Uh, be aware that sometimes the panel borders can impact the way you proportion and draw your figures and to make sure you draw through. And so like if I even if I draw a face, for example, um, and it is a face that is, if there's like a panel like this and I'm drawing a side of a face like this, I'd be tempted to just do this and, and call it a day. But usually I will go through and draw through because you'll realize, oh, wow, I've drawn, you know, uh, a really broad nose. So unless I intentionally intended to do that, um, you have to be mindful of it. So that this panel board, and when you just draw to that line, your, your proportions on this side not, might not be correct. So go ahead and draw through and then erase it afterwards and you're done with that panel okay all right so so anyway all right so thank you guys for tuning in uh there is the discord channel where you guys can give feedback um like i said next uh we'll do another art critique next saturday i will give advance notice of who the artist is so they can make sure that they're tuning in although when i talk about the art it's not really about the art itself it's about things i see as being problematic in these submissions that I want to just focus on. So it's not about making you specifically better, but by picking a subject inspired by the submissions that you guys are sending in. Um, if the submissions are of a, a level where I feel they could be published or suitable for publication, I will get back to you. But that that is, to be honest, very rare. And, uh, you know, even when we're at Wildstorm, we would have talent calls and we get hundreds if not thousands of submissions thousands actually early on and we would pick maybe five people out of several thousand so um but at the same time keep trying uh hopefully these things help illuminate and inspire you guys a bit and i will see you tomorrow while we're doing an art stream and we give away some art and do some fun stuff and it's a little more interactive with with chat uh thank you to the mods kirihiko Ren Elephant and Crispy Egg Roll for keeping everyone in line. <laughs> and uh, thanks, thanks you get, uh, thank you guys. Oh, wait, one last question. Is the super on the f okay from Kuyamu? Thanks. One question, please. On the Superman panel, should the first for, should the fist leave the panel? I, I do not believe it should. Show everything in panel, unless you're doing something that's very uh, cropped in, like a very Frank Miller crop, which I can talk about it later. So the, the rules of what you show in panel, what you don't show in the panel, it's a bigger subject altogether, okay? So thank you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., all right? Have a good one.